For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. To do that, turn in your Bible to uh, Matthew chapter nine. Matthew chapter nine. I've been talking about this business, or at least what I'm praying for. We're going to talk about prayer this morning. I've been praying, and I mentioned last week that I've been praying that this will be a praying church. Hey. Now, I'm praying that you'll start increasing your prayer time and your prayer list. And uh, my, how we need to pray. We need to pray more. That uh, Tom's done a great job on the bulletin, and that's a good place to start. He's got a lot of needs in there. Um, we've got we did have, I'm not sure if they're still back there or not, a list of everybody that, that attends here or did, you know, did attend, some of them are not able to come right now. Um, if you get one of those, that's a good list to go by and pray. Uh, the membership, or not all members, but you know, attendees of the church. And uh, uh, find other places. We all have lost loved ones. Put them on your list. I, I bought a notebook uh, at Walmart a while back, a big, great big notebook, and I'm starting trying to put them down because you know what happens? Now, you don't have this problem. <laughs> you, know, you get down that list. I've got that list in my mind, and I know exactly who I'm going to pray for before I get out of bed in the morning. I've got a list. And once in a while, guess what happens? I cannot think of that name. And the Lord knows who it is, and I go ahead, and later I'll think of it and pray for it. But, uh, Make lists. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I want to talk about this morning the sin of prayerlessness. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, if you're there, look down at verse 36. Uh, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Father, would you help us to pray for that prayer as well as the others that we prayed this morning. Lord, give us laborers. Give us laborers here in New Beginning. Give us laborers in other churches and other good works that need to, to be built up and, and going. The fundamental sound works we're praying for. Uh, not the, the liberal crowd, but we're praying that God gives us, build us up and help us to pray for laborers. And Lord, would you help us this morning as we go through these scriptures and, and these thoughts that we have on our mind and any that you'll give us today. We pray that you'll come and, and minister to our hearts and move on us in an unusual way today, please. And oh God, would you save our lost loved ones and save those that we know and those that are um, afflicted with this COVID and other things. There's just so many things to pray for. But would you really revive America today? We pray for all of our veterans. We pray for uh, the martyrs that are going on. All these things. But, oh, God, would you help us this morning to get about our Father's business, which is prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I meant to recognize, too, and I did. How many do we have any veterans here today? I think we have one back here. And that's where Derek and I want to recognize you. I appreciate your service there, Tom. We do. God bless you. I don't want to forget that. We used to have a banner. Uh, much like this one on the wall here. Right. And we had it up for years. And it was this very verse. He said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It was right there in front of us for a long time. I, I mean, I'm big on that. I just, I just, I believe we, a lot of times we pray for the sick, and that's good. We need to do that. Pray for the afflicted, people out of work. We pray for uh, people in agreement. We, we have all kinds of people in the nursing home, and, and those things ought to be prayed for. And we pray for the lost, that God would save them. But wait a minute. They can't hear without a preacher. Jesus knew that. And so, haven't got that up here now, but you've got it in front of you. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. Are you praying for laborers? We need a pianist. Now, somebody pray for a pianist in here. Would you do that? Amen. That's a laborer. We need some Sunday school teachers, and we have some that would, would go, and if we had some students, we need the students, again, some young people, children. But we need laborers, don't we? We need some laborers to come in here and help us win souls. Just help us to build up. 
Uh, God has, has God, I asked the question, I mentioned God has, has God limited himself? I wonder, I wonder the question comes to me, has God limited himself? Uh, sometimes he's not limited by, he's not a limited God, but I wonder if he's limited himself sometimes because he tells us to pray and sometimes we don't pray. I wonder if the work could go stronger or bigger, you know, revival. Another, another thought, you know, I mean, I believe we're limited because of prayerlessness and, and God can do anything. He's all powerful and he tells us over and over in the Bible to pray. And right here, verse 38, mark it in your Bible. Pray for laborers. That's what he's saying. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But back in verse 14, it tells us, how shall they hear without a preacher? And Tom was getting on that this morning. I appreciate that. And I'm just always talking about preachers in the pulpit. We're talking about people to witness and people to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Every preacher literally gospel the good news. That's what we need. We need people doing that. We need to be doing that. Maybe that sometimes is why we're not praying. We're afraid God will send us. <laughs> He will probably, and then he'll send others. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Uh, and I said, you ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receive it. He that seeketh findeth him that knocketh it shall be opened. That's a promise. A promise to answer your prayers. God promises to do more than what we're willing to do. We need to pray. And uh, I, I believe he's, a, if we're going to ever receive, we he wants us to pray if we expect to get what we need. He said in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, you know who gets saved? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. If they don't pray, they don't get saved. You can't just say, I'm, you know, I've always been saved. I've never heard that. <laughs> Some people think that. Uh, no, I just, you know, no, you're not just automatically. And, and those that call on the name of the Lord, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee what is great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things. God wants to do great and mighty things in America. Can you imagine two old ladies? And I say, old, I'm an old man. <laughs> I say, two old ladies prayed in a revival for the Hebrides Islands. Now there were a few, I think there were a few men uh, also praying in another place at a bar. In fact, uh, for that same revival, but I don't know which ones. I guess both of them together, both groups. But they prayed in a revival where people came and fell in ditches begging somebody to pray with them. Tell them about Jesus. Oh, what God can! They, this, the world doesn't know what God can do. He can do even greater than He's ever done. He's Almighty God, and He promises to do exceeding above and more all we ask or think. So let's let's ask big prayers. He wants us to call. He wants to show his mighty power. And boy, how we need to pray. Pray, and God would move a revival in our midst. Oh, how we need to pray for revival. How our country needs revival. Isn't it in a mess? Yes. Don't throw up your hands because it's in a mess. Get on your knees. Or if some people pray walking. I pray walking a lot of times. I pray standing. And I believe it's in the position your body is so important as a position your heart. <laughs> you need to pray. They take time to pray. I was encouraged. I was in a meeting here uh, a while back and, and uh, David Dickerson uh, some weeks ago was preaching and talking about how uh, James Stewart prayed walking and that encouraged me. I didn't know. I didn't know anybody else prayed. Well, but he's a great man of God. They said you could walk down the street, meet him on the street and feel the presence of God. Oh, we need that kind of people praying. We need praying. Oh, my friend, have you really prayed for the needs of the church? Have you really prayed? You know what? I'm not time to, if I get that bullet, I have, I have skipped over that sometimes. And God remind me. I pray for the people in the nursing home, pray for the people in the cancer. So, and somehow or other, you know, we want to pray about that. Well, let's talk a little bit about the sin of prayerlessness. <coughs> Let's learn to pray effectually, fervently, as James tells us. Regularly, by the way. Have a prayer ministry every day. I'm just so busy that I can't pray. Don't ever say that. No. Number one, 
Prayerlessness causes the fury of God to be poured out. Here's what he said in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 25 about prayerlessness. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not and upon the families that call not on thy name. For well, they've eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and made him his habitation desolate. They said, listen, those that don't call on your name, pour out your fury on them. The heathen, people that uh, are lost, he will do that one day. That will literally come to pass. Oh, my friend, you got unsaved love and spoil, I tell you. People that are unsaved are those that refuse to call on his name. They go to another god or another uh, statue or something. And they do other things. And oh my, God's going to pour it. Listen, Pharaoh came under his wrath one day. I tell you, God kept messing with him, messing with him, trying to show him and give him plague after plague. And, and the water turned to blood and the frogs came in and the lice came in. Uh, finally, you know, there's an end to God's patience. Uh, I know he's long-suffering. Oh my friend, think about the na nations uh, in the land of Canaan that he's talking about. They, they refused to pray. And God said, I'm going to pour my fury out on them. Oh, my friend, I know people that if they don't get right with God, God's going to pour his fury out on them one day. That's why we talked about last week, the terror, we, the terror of the Lord. We know the terror of the Lord. We do. Number two, prayerlessness is a sin of omission. Did you know it's a sin? I never got drunk. I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't know any girls that do. You know? But I tell you, is omission prayers, uh, omission sins. James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And we know to pray because Jesus has told us here, and how many other times, umpteen times, he's told us to pray. And a lot in there about prayer. But things we fail to do are just as much sin as things we do. And we need to remember that. To fail to pray is a great and terrible sin. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Oh yeah, we were talking about that mercy seat being torn this morning. <laughs> That and I was talking about that. God came down and ripped that when Jesus died on the cross. He tore it in two. That now we can go into the Holy of Holies. We don't have to have the local, local high priest. We have a high priest in heaven. We don't have to go to the local one. But he can be touched down. He can be reached. He can hear and he can answer prayer. Uh, I was in a meeting this week, uh, Friday night. I think we went down the mountain. Bob Doom and I went down to hear a preacher. Ricky Lee, I don't know if you ever heard him or not. He's on the radio something. Matt, he is a preacher. He is a preacher. If you get a chance to hear him, you listen to him. What a blessing he was in my heart. But he talked about in one spot about, he was talking about the priestly garments. He went back to the Old Testament and talked about that ephod and that, uh, all, all that the, the uh, high priest had on his breast right there over his heart. And he's talking about how much he has us on his heart. You see those Twelve tribes were there on his heart. They were right over that spot there. And that's a picture of Jesus uh, taking us right into the presence of God personally, individually. He, you're not just a number. <laughs> you're not just a bunch of people at New Beginning Baptist Church. You are an individual and God takes you before, uh, Jesus takes you before the Father's uh, throne there. And through the blood of Jesus, wow, he can be reached. So you need to be encouraged to pray. Number three, uh, prayerlessness leads to spiritual poverty. James 4 and verse 2 says, You lust and have not, you kill, and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. Well, if you want somebody to be healed and helped, you need to pray about it. You won't get it if you don't ask for it. You don't just pray, Lord, let me pray for all those I'm duty bound to pray for and then leave <laughs> in one second. You don't pray. You pray specifically for what you want. You know, when I was growing up, I asked for some specific things when I wanted it. I didn't just say, Mom, you know, give me a blessing or something. Uh, man, if I want a dollar, I want a dollar. You know, if I want something, I'll, you pray specifically for what you need and what you want. And God wants that. He, he loves that. 
Uh, someone said it this way, I like this. Said you have no answers to prayer because you have no prayer to be answered. <laughs> well, if you don't lift up your mouth and you, your voice in prayer. In James 1 verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Man, when I get up and get down in my chair to get ready to read my Bible in the morning, that's the first thing I ask for. I've got seven things that I ask for. Wisdom is number one. I need it. I need wisdom. I need the mind of Christ too. Boy, I need the humility of Christ. I've got a hold of this. Man, I need that. Please give it to me. He said he'll give it to you. I believe he does. A lot of people are spiritually bankrupt. A lot of people are going to get to heaven and God says, look at this warehouse. I mean, massive warehouse. Look at all these things in there. I have them for you. And I couldn't give them to you because you didn't ask for them. Wouldn't that be a sad thing? Wow. I hope that doesn't happen to you. I'm afraid it's going to happen to all of us. Some, some, some things that we could have gotten even more. Are you with a pray? Oh, I'll be a prayer warrior. I want this to be a praying church. Number four, prayerlessness allows defeat to come to others. You ever hear that saying, I not hurt nobody but me by doing what I'm doing? Huh? That's a lie. That's a lie. You affect other people. Exodus chapter 17, verse 11 to 13. Here's what it said. Here's the story. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. They're fighting down in the valley. This is the picture there. Joshua was down there fighting the battle. <clears throat> Moses raises his hands in prayer. He gets tired. <laughs> uh, how long can you hold your hands up? I, I couldn't hold very long. <laughs> long as he held them up, they won. When he put them down, Amalek was just beating the tar out of them. Goes on to say, but Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone, put it under him. They, they found him a chair there. <laughs> okay, And he sat there on and Aaron and Hurd stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword because one held the hand up on that side, one held the hand, he was sitting down so they could, they could hold it up for him. As long as he held up his hands, that's holding up your hands in prayer. 1 Timothy 2, 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Boy, we need to do that. Did pray, Moses' prayer make a difference? You better believe it. That was the difference of winning and losing in one man's prayers. You say, I'm not anybody. I'm not a Moses. I'm not. You're one person and you can lift up prayers. You do not know what God would do with you. If you only pray, boy, we need to pray. Listen, our prayers for others make a difference. I like to pray for people that are sick, people that are afflicted. This man has had the aneurysm. I pray for him. Pray for his salvation if he needs salvation. Oh, my friend, uh, we need to pray instead of doing things that interfere with prayer. Don't do things, don't let, don't let your life get bogged down so much with things that you don't have time to pray. Make time to pray. If you make, you may not make a list like I do a lot of times. I make a list the night before what I'm going to do, or maybe early in the morning, what I'm going to do that day, at least some of the basic things, not everything. The things that I really want to be sure and get out of the way, I put them down. And be sure, you better put prayer on those. I want to pray before I get out of bed, and then I want to pray when I get out of bed after I go to read the Bible, and we pray again, and then I want to spend 30 minutes in prayer later, and, and, and then I try to get some more in. Oh, listen, you've got to put it on your schedule. Or guess what? You'll say, well, I just don't have time today. Look at it, I've got to do all of this. No, you work God into your schedule because that's what you're doing. If you're not praying, you're leaving God out of your life. We need to pray. Oh, we need to pray. We need to pray. Our prayers for others make a difference. Number five, prayerlessness is a sin of neglect. Neglect. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Oh, my friend. Oh, my friend. I will teach you the good and right He said it'd be a sin for me to stop praying for you. And boy, we need to pray. Any of you got a garden? What happens if you neglect that garden? Huh? Yeah, buddy. The weeds will take over on me. Real fast. 
Doesn't have, doesn't take very long either. What happens if you neglect to, uh, your house? <laughs> oh my! Need paint after a while, or something cleaned or washed. You let your car sit out there a few years and see what kind of shape it's in. <laughs> you can't neglect things. And you must take care of the things that you own and have. And you must take care of God's business. One of the greatest is prayer. Oh, we need to pray for laborers. Pray for laborers. Start praying today. Put that on your list. Laborers. And if you repent, uh, teachers, people to work, students to come in here to be taught. Oh, let's don't neglect. Listen, you neglect your wife. You're going to get in trouble, fellas. <laughs> Won't be long. Now my wife was a very wise lady. Preacher get, you know, preacher get busy. They get busy. Every once in a while Helen would say, Time for me. <laughs> she didn't get me about a year, but she time for me. She says, Time for me. Been busy. Been gone. Been here and there. Oh my. Doing preacher things. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You better not think next your wife. I'll tell you this, <laughs> you better not neglect your children. Well, I spent a lot of time just trying to keep body and soul together. I worked 12, 16 hours a day when I was, kids were little. And I regret not spending more time with them. And of course, I didn't get saved until, until grown and up there. And we were just struggling. But that's no excuse. That's not an excuse. My friend, you can lose your kids. I'll tell you, if you're not careful, you lose your grandkids if you're not careful. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. And it was for a good reason. I mean, I, we, had, we just lived from hand to mouth, one week to another, you know. And even with 12, 16 hours a day, and I worked a lot of them. And I'm not, I'm not complaining. I, I thank the Lord for my family. But I want to tell you something. We, listen, you'll have nothing but trouble if you neglect prayer. I mean that. And we need to be praying back the powers of Satan too, by the way. Right. Talking about that lately. Oh, my friend, you better do that. To neglect prayer, someone says, is to neglect God. Oh, that prophet Samuel, he didn't want to sin against God, stopping to pray for him. You know what? He, he prayed a great revival into Israel. He did. They had a great revival in Samuel, the days of Samuel. He's a great man of God. And we could have a great revival. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Don't stop praying. Oh, my friend, God sent a revival to Israel through his prayers and his intercession. Who knows what he can do to you? You say, oh, Samuel was Superman, Moses was Superman. No, there's no Superman. No, they were great because they served a great God, and we serve the same great God, and we can get the same Amen. great prayers. I believe we can call fire down. I believe we could. I believe that it may not come in a literal form like it did back then, but I believe we could call some fires of revival down. I believe that. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we have heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Say, what should I pray here? I've got this list of them. Everybody said to church, what should I pray for them? Well, that's a good thing. Just start out with the Bible. Run, run through Peter and some of these other, some of Paul's writings and some of Paul's prayers were great and wonderful. He prays for it to have the fullness of God. Wow. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And, and that, wow. Uh, wow, what a, what, a, what a prayer warrior. Wow. Spiritual understanding. Pray that God give the knowledge of his will. Yeah. Pray for the pastor. He had leadership, direction. I need to follow Jesus. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. But I need wisdom. I need leadership. Number six. Prayerlessness is disobedience to God's commands. Here's what he said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to the sin that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I believe you better put that on your list pretty high up. You may, uh, everybody can't get to it at first, maybe first thing in the morning. Maybe you have children or maybe you have, <laughs> you got dogs you got to let out. You got things you do, you know. And, and the things, that, and, but you put it on your list. Don't, don't neglect it. Because he said men ought always to pray. New Testament. Not on, on over in the New Testament talks about praying without ceasing. Okay. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. 
I will therefore let men pray everywhere. And we, we give you that one. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Uh, hold your finger right there and turn to Mark chapter 9. For just a minute. Uh, very next book there. Give you a moment there. Take me a moment to get over there. Mark chapter 9. And the story, we're not going to read the whole story, but the story is uh, verses 14 through 29. But the story is, and we'll briefly tell you that a man brought his son. He had a demon. And he brought him for the disciples to uh, cast him out. And uh, when Jesus came on the scene, he said, we uh, brought the son here, and, and the disciples couldn't cast him out. And, of course, Jesus said in verse 21, How long? <laughs> or, no, in, on O Faith of Generation, verse 19, how long shall I be with you? <laughs> How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Oh, I tell you, that's what we need, we need to get into Jesus, don't we? Uh, we need to get him to Jesus. Uh, verse 28 and 29. Um, they asked why they couldn't do it. The disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said to them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And, and I noticed, uh, I ran across this a while back, and I guess it's what got me started on, on this message. Uh, I had written at the bottom of my page a long time ago of uh, these two verses here. I wrote this, most of our failures are prayer failures slash faith failures. And that's what mm -hmm. most of our failures are prayer failures, faith failures. That, that, their, their, their problem here was a faith failure was. And, and verse 28 and 29, and I thought about that. And boy, I tell you, that just kind of, uh, you know, got me started thinking about this, this business of prayerlessness. I don't know, just how you feel about it. It's good to mark in your Bible and put things sometimes that will jog your memory, you know. If you just have something, you know, read it. You, you wrote it years ago, you forgot all about it. You, you run across it as you read it through your Bible again. You run across it. There it is. A little note that uh, stirred my heart. Over and over the Bible says, Matthew 26 and verse 41, says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. In other words, you need to be aware of what's going on. You and I need to watch. Do we not see how heathen we are? Do we not see how bad of shape we are as a nation? Do we not see that we can't even get ships unloaded? we got empty shells. Everything's, everything's falling apart. Dollar and say like that. And I'm not trying to get political. I'm just saying, we're in a mess. Shouldn't we start praying? And, and if, I hope you're already praying. I hope, you are, I hope you have a good prayer life. But if you don't, I want to stir your heart to, to get at it. Boy, we need to get at it. There's a lot of praying to be done. A lot of praying. Oh, my friend. Watch and pray. You know, I've been in a few places where I guarantee you I watched while I prayed. I didn't close my eyes. And I've been in some places where I did more close my eyes praying. I've been around some situations rough. <laughs> I've been to some funerals where <laughs> I tell you, I don't even want to go there. Woo. They were about to kill each other. Mm -hmm. I had one lady come up to me after a funeral one time. It's amazing. She had an umbrella in her head. <laughs> She said, I was going to protect you, preacher. <laughs> she said, they just threatened to kill one another here, and I'm afraid to go get at you. She had her own brother. <laughs> God will send us a little angel in there every now and then. You know, just kind of encourage you. I mean, I didn't know I was in that kind of situation. I knew it was a bad situation. I knew this was a rough crowd, brother. I knew that. But I mean, it was something else. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them and curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Boy, I'll tell you, I, I get on that thing this week, it's really, really bothered me. It's getting under my skin. Because <laughs> I don't always do it that way. I usually have to pray for me before I pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and whatever the name is. I usually have to pray for me. But I tell you what really hit me in that verse, and I've never seen it before. You, you see something every time you go through the Bible. You'll, you'll jump, something else will jump out at you you just hadn't seen before. Because he said, love your enemies, and I've talked about that. God, give me a love for them. Let me pray for this salvation. And, and I do. Uh, I, I try to 
to get myself in a shape where I can, honestly, because I'll tell you why. You, 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 listen, those are sins in our life. When we don't have the right attitude. What is it Barton says on the radio a lot of times? He said you can have the right position and the wrong disposition. I like that. That's pretty good. The right position and the wrong disposition. I mean, we've got the right position. We believe the Bible. We believe the, the truths of the Word of God. A lot of times with our disposition, maybe. I had to confess it uh, uh, something a while back of, of having said, listen, you can have the preacher the other night. was preaching so powerfully. He said, I had to do it <laughs> recently. Had a bad attitude, somebody. Huh? Come on. And nobody knew it but me. And God. <laughs> you know what? That hit your prayers. But this is what hit me in this verse. But I say, and you love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Ooh. I have never asked for a blessing on Joe Biden and this crowd up there now. Huh? You, have you been asking God to bless that crowd up there? It's trying to destroy us. <laughs> I had to do that. God said, I want you to do it. I said it. Mm. Huh? There's a whole lot of ways to sin besides committing adultery and getting drunk and murdering somebody. We can do a lot of things, and I talked about it a while ago, omission sins. That's what they are. Well, preacher, I don't know. That's a hard one. It is. You know what? I believe Jesus practiced it when he died on the cross. My Lord practiced it, and I believe if he could do it while he is hurting, while he was suffering such awful suffering on the cross, dying for me, dying for you, I believe I can do it if he did it. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what to do. Huh. Huh. That's a pretty good blessing, I guess. Wow. Oh, but we do need to pray that God would save them. I, I uh, let's see, somebody was praying at the prayer meeting the other morning, Saturday morning. We got a new man, we got a new preacher, pastor. Uh, in fact, I was in it, that's the church I was in, the revival meeting. And he came last week and he came back this week. And I appreciate that. But I, he preached something like this. What could happen if Somebody like Kamala Harris got saved. And he began, in his prayer, and he began to talk about what could happen. <laughs> I got stirred up. I got stirred up, brother. What could happen if God changed the top of, of the echelon here, huh? The top brass. What if they got saved and, and got right? What if they started saying, let's make America great again? What if they said, woo? It ain't going to happen, preacher. Well, wait a minute. I'm going to have to do like that. Right. Seeding abundantly above all. You can ask your thing. God said, I can do it. I can show you great and mighty things we talked about a while ago. You don't, you don't know about it. Great and mighty things, Jeremiah said. I can go beyond your wildest dream. Your wildest fantasy and imagination of what you'd like to see. Boy, I'd like to see America just backward ooh, and beyond where it ever was. I'd like to see it on fire. I'd like to see Hebrides Island experience. And then beyond that, he could do beyond it. Beyond it. Every time I pass coming back to the evening service, this beer house up here is full, parking lot slammed full. And it grieves me. And I pray for their salvation over there. And they got to close that place down and put them, send them down here. Amen. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can use them down here. They make good, good Christian to get saved, you know, you get right with God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my friend. We just need to get where we ought to be in our prayer life. And you know what I found out? Uh, you think you're pretty good, Joe. So God begins to put his finger here and there. Uh, he begins to match them sore spots. You're not so good. You, have, you, you did this. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> you know, that's all you do. Just confess it. That's what he wants us to do. And, and forsake it, of course. Let me give you one more. Number seven. Prayerlessness leads to hell. Rid it of us. We said that a while ago, and I'll say it again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you don't call upon the name of the Lord, you won't be saved. You need to receive Christ today. You're not a Christian. 
And I say that for anybody here, but I say it for our group watching too. Oh, those that refuse to be saved by praying, and, and you have to pray to be saved. I ask a lot of people, and they, they've done everything but what God said. I think they're all right. I hope I go. I think I go. No. Now one day you'll wake up in hell if you don't receive Jesus. So I asked you, if you'd be willing to ask Jesus to come in the arm today, if you're watching, maybe somebody's watching that's not saved. And you can do that. You can call upon the name of the Lord. He said, for whosoever, isn't that wonderful, wonderful promise, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. He said, as many as receive it, just, just receive Christ as your Savior, repent of your sins, and ask Him to come in your heart. Oh, He will. And, and what it means, and people don't get this, because I keep running and people think they're all right, and they're living in terrible, terrible sin. Getting saved means turning your life over to Jesus. That's what it means. It means that he's going to run it from now on. It means when you read something in the Bible, you can't just keep living in sin and be saved. And I don't know how many people I've run into not long in the recent days. Now tell me they're all right. And they're not all right because God said very clearly, some of the things that they're doing are wicked. Uh, he talks about it over there in the New Testament. How he, he talks about how if you're living in sin, uh, if you're committing fornication, if you're committing adultery, he said the effeminate. He said they won't inherit heaven. In other words, you won't go. You'll be in hell. Oh, it means turning your life, all your decisions over to Jesus. He makes them. He gives us, this is his word. So I'm not going to do some of the things in there. Well, you're probably not going to make heaven then. Because that's what it means when you ask Jesus in your heart. It's not that you ask Jesus in your heart and then you can do anything you want to. Because you know what Baptists believe. You want to say it, always say it. No, no. You have to repent of your sins to get saved. And when you do that, you're, you're turning your life over to him to run for you. When he says to do something, you have to do it. And he tells a lot of things. A lot of people say they're saved, they won't be faithful. A lot of people won't tithe. A lot of people won't do it. Anything. Not, God's not telling me what to do. Well, there's something wrong with that. Because that's what salvation means. That God starts telling you what to do. Boy, when I got saved, I, could, I, could, I told my wife, I said, we've missed so much. We, I'm grown and not and these little kids know more than me. I said, we're going to go every Sunday. We're going to Sunday school, Sunday night, morning, Sunday, uh, what they have, training union. <laughs> we had training unions like Sunday school in the morning at night. And then we had the service at night, and then Wednesday night. And boy, there's a lot of times it was, it, was, it was hard to go. We were just pushing it. But I just determined I wanted to go. I wanted Jesus to run my life. I didn't want I don't want to run it anymore. And I, I have tried to push things through time to time. I've had to confess and ask him to forgive me. The whole point is we obey him. Ask him in your heart and then will you live for him? That's what we're talking about. Living for him. You can't have some little made up Jesus let you live any way you want to. You can't do that. That will not get you to heaven. You can call him Jesus, but he won't be able to save you in that day. The Jesus of the Bible is holy, holy, holy. And he expects us to live for him. We're not going to be perfect, but I want to tell you something. He can help you. He'll help you through those bumps in the road. He'll help you through those trials, but you can't just live in open sin and claim to be saved day in and day out. David committed sin one time, adultery, and he committed murder with it. It was all right about the same time, close proximity there. And God whipped him for the rest of his life. My friend, you don't want to. God hates sin. I tell you another man, his name was Samson. He played around with the girls a while. The enemy gouged his eyes out. Anybody think God hates sin? Yeah. Oh, God just forgives me for all that. No, 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 watch it. Now he does. He, he's forgiven. But you can't just wallow in it. You can't go back to drugs and alcohol. You can't go back to, to immorality. You can't go back to all those things. They have to come to an end. God will bring them to an end, or else he'll bring you to an end, I tell you. He'll bring salvation. I don't lose my eyes 
you. I don't lose on anybody that gouge them out. The man that had such power that he could kill a thousand men by himself. The jawbone of an ass. They gouge his eyes out. Why? Because of S I N. He was saved. Oh, yes. I believe I'll see Samson in heaven. I'll be able to see David in heaven. But that's what happens to a Christian that sins. God will take you to the woodshed. You don't want that. So if you don't have that Jesus in your heart, you need to ask Him today. And uh, we praise the Lord for those that are watching as well as those that are here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask Him to help us today. Uh, Tom, lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.